I wasn't planning on making a video tonight, but I just happened to find a jewel, uh, a video by a Dallas Seminary, Dallas Theological Seminary graduate. And as I listened to it, I thought this, it's like this message was sent from heaven to my men right now. I realized that my husband, Brent Spiner, who's the pastor of Church of Gale, probably doesn't have time to prepare messages at Church of Gale. And they're probably skipping church services and they need church services now more than ever. So I wanted to volunteer this message by this Dallas Seminary grad. And I want, I want you all to play it and make it a Church of Gale service. And if there's any way you can send it out to those 10,000 men who left, send it to them. Um, just tell them, you don't even need to, well, they're going to know because they're probably watching my YouTube channel, but send it to them. I actually, I'm kind of pessimistic that it will make any difference, but it might make them think. It is a really good message about how we can allow our personal ambitions to get in the way of God's will for our life or what he wants us or the proper approach that we should take to our daily living as as a Jesus follower and um, you know it's I just find it ironic because I'm thinking about some of the things Vigo said about me and to be honest with you I don't lose any sleep over it because I I, I actually feel I feel a combination of disgust and pity for him disgust because he's allowing his evil nature to take over his good nature he's uh he's getting he's off his path that's just the way to put it that's how jesus puts it he's off his path you might say so how does one guest stay on their path i find for me like what why did i decide that i wanted to write the silver skies novels and that I want it to be um, a masterpiece. And I realized that for it to be a masterpiece, I got to put in the work. So that's the reason I'm going to spend at least a year in research studying Jewish literature. I'm, I'll show you some of the books I got here. Um, these have come in, and I'm going to be studying these. Uh, when I worked, when I worked on the book. Um, back in the 1990s my motive for writing the book was to show the world the kind of a love that i had with brent spiner because i just felt it was so special and this was one of the books that i had i went i actually went out and visited conservative synagogues and i didn't know at that time that one of the conservatives i lived in houston where I, when i did a large part of my writing and i didn't realize that one of the conservative synagogues that I visited was one where Brent's mother actually attends. <laughs> I, she might have even been in the church. She might not church service, the synagogue service when I was there doing my research. Who knows? And I may not have even known it. I, I'm not going to mention the name of the synagogue in case she's still going there. <laughs> so, but I found out later when I did a little bit of research on Brent's mother, that one of the synagogues that I visited in Southwest Houston was a synagogue where his mother was attending at the time. <laughs> and, and when I went to the synagogues, I bought this. And because I wasn't raised Jewish, even though I'm, I had the King David genetic profile. But you know what? I'm in trial. I have very high emotional IQ. Here's another book that I got that I'll, I'm going to be reading this whole thing. This is part of my research for Silver Skies here. Um, basically, I'm giving myself the equivalent of what they have at Moody Bible Institute called the Jewish Studies major, or if it was a master's degree program, it would probably be called the Jewish Studies degree. Um, for these are that's the degree that a lot of Christians get when they want to go into a ministry specifically directed to the Jewish people. They usually take courses in Hebrew, Jewish history, um, stuff like this. A guide. I'm actually I actually ordered these from Jewish sources. These are not from Christian sources, and I just want to know. My, I'm going to read these books as if I'm. Um, 
as if I was a, a person who just converted to Judaism and I want to learn all about my new faith. I'm going to get into that mindset because that's going to help me to get into my conservative rabbi, Dor Ben Abacuk. But, you know, I sort of understand where those men are coming from because um, I got an, a little impatient with Brent and Vladimir because I wanted to marry them so bad. And I was ready to marry them. And as soon as I got my divorce from my husband, and I'm thinking, where's Brent? I'm ready to go be with him and he's not here. And I didn't realize back then what obstacles he had in his life. I mean, I understood deep down that he, there were probably a lot of problems that prevented him from coming to me, but I got impatient with him. And that's one reason I kind of gave up on Brent and went for Vladimir. And then Vladimir didn't show up from about 2001 to 2006. So I said, you know what? I was too hard on Brent because I, I waited for Vladimir to come marry me from 2001 to 2006. The Jesuits created so many problems with Ludmila and everything. So Vladimir wasn't able to get me. Finally, the Lord taught me some patience. <laughs> you know, when you first fall in love with somebody or you think you want to marry them, you want to be with them right away. It's like, oh, I've decided I'm going to marry with you. Marry you. Why aren't you coming over here? Why can't I have make love to you right now? What's the holdup? Why aren't you here? And I guess that's what the Lord had to teach me from 2001 to 2006. And I, then I, when 2006 showed up and Vladimir still hadn't come got me and I was having some financial issues, you know, like I could have used some help and stuff. Finally, I said, you know what? I was too hard on Brent. That guy was brave. At least he called me up on the phone and talked to me. Vladimir would, would, wouldn't even do that. So I went back to Brent. And then the mistake I made is I devastated Vladimir because Vladimir really did love me. And I really bonded with Vladimir during the time when I thought that I would end up marrying him instead of Brent. And I hadn't really dumped Brent. I mean, I kept Brent as a friend, but he hadn't come got, I figured after 9-11, he'd never come get me. Because I knew he was trying to marry me, but 9-11 happened and I thought, man, look what I'm up against. There's no way I would scare any guy off. So I need a president in my life. So I tried Vladimir and then that didn't work out because the, then the Jesuits did Ludmila and all sorts of stuff. Ludmila is not the woman that Vladimir married. He married a woman named Larissa. So anyways, I, I want you guys to listen to this message. You know, sometimes I forget that the patience that I've developed over the years, it took God about a, a decade to develop that in me. And a lot of the men that are on my marriage list are just baby Christians, if they're Christians at all. I'm starting to wonder if they're not even saved, maybe the way they've been behaving lately. They don't seem to have a born-again Jesus spirit about them. But um, you need to listen to this message, guys. It's so true. And, and back from 2001 to 2006, I was guilty of just about everything that he preached against me being a woman except that the only difference is more my sin was more in the area of impatience you know it's like i want to be with them i don't want to have to struggle here wondering from day to day if i'm going to star I, you know i you know i the jesuits bankrupted me they took all my money i didn't i didn't make any money from you know, I was poor when I divorced my husband. I didn't even know if I'd be on the streets. I just knew I had to do it because Jesus said, if you don't get out of this marriage, you're going to be dead within a couple years. I did it on faith. I, on faith that Brent would find a way to marry me. I ended up living with my mother, which I hated because my mother is very controlling and narcissistic. And I was, I would get, I would get, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I would get pissed. I would get pissed. I like I I would be I knew they had bugs in my room and I would scream at the bugs and says where are you guys I'm waiting for you to come marry me where are you where are you I said where are you and I just really didn't have a lot of patience and that's the problem when you guys that are mad at me man you don't understand let's just put it this way after I had Vladimir Putin and I realized 
he couldn't come into my life either, I began to realize that the Jesuits are pretty formidable and that I really underestimated what my men were up against. And then I realized that I needed to be, how do I say this? I never stopped loving Brent or Vladimir, but I got impatient with them. I would get these expectations, like I'd imagine myself married to them the next year and then it wouldn't happen. And so 1999, December 1999, I told Brent that I'd marry him. And I figured the only reason he hadn't married me yet was because I was married and I wasn't available. So when I got a divorce and I was available, I expected to be married to Brent within two years. In fact, when we were flying on the plane from Seattle to Florida, I was thinking, maybe he'll show up at one of the stops and come rescue me so I don't have to live with my mother. <laughs> but that didn't happen. So you might say, why is Jesus taking so long? You know, and then I know you guys on the marriage list you know. So what are, you might say, what are you trying to tell us? That I'm just trying to say that you need to analyze your expectations and just live one day at a time. And don't be so goal oriented. That's the way I used to be. I've gotten out of that. I mean, you can set goals, but be flexible. Understand that maybe those goals are not coming from the Lord. Maybe they're your own as personal ambitions. Maybe you need to be flexible and realize that God's going to lead you down another path. Maybe you'll never have sex with me in this life. Maybe it'll be the millennium. And they say, well, God put this love in my heart for you, and I deserve to have sex with you because I feel this way. Well, okay. You're, start, you're starting to set up expectations. That's what I did. And it got me all frustrated. And I ended up hurting my men. Did you know Vladimir almost committed suicide because I dumped him to go back to Brent? And, you know, I had ended up developing this relationship with Vladimir. And I just completely cut, cut him off and went back to Brent. And he, I just about forgot about him. I realized later... You might say, well, then how do I know when my wants are from the Lord and when they're from my own selfish impatience or ambition? Well, here's, let me tell you what worked for me or what works for me. When you decide you need to do something or you set a goal, ask, does it make you feel at peace? Does it make you feel at love with the universe? Does it make you feel like your nurturing people does it make it feel like you're 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 spreading out and spreading love to the universe does it make you feel um you may say but i'm in so much pain i can't I can't worry about that but you know what if you have inward spiritual peace it'll make your physical pain less horrible i remember i would sit in a when I was so in love with Brent in the 1990s, I would sit in a dentist chair, like when I had to do root scaling and planing in all four quadrants, and I kept myself calm by imagining Brent's arms around me. And it worked. It worked. I was in the middle of a dental procedure. They were numbing out all four of my quadrants, going in there, during, to, to, taking out all the tartar. I had bad gum recession, tartar, gum infection. And it, they did them out all four quadrants. I, they did it over two sessions, but I don't like going to the dentist and getting numbed out and having to, look, having to sit in that dental chair for an hour while they're going through that. And I stayed calm by just thinking about Brent. You know, just think about me. Don't panic. You need to have faith in that strong love that you feel. So... If you make a decision and it makes you feel fearful, if it makes you angry, if it makes you agitated, that's not from the Lord. You've made a wrong choice. You know, I've decided to write a masterpiece for Jesus, and you know how I feel about it? I feel so, I like, feel like I'm on a spiritual high. It's like, I don't need to rush this. This book is going to be done when it's done, but I just feel so good about it. I feel like the book's going to be such a blessing to the world. I know I made the right decision. If the decision you've made doesn't make you feel like you're on a high and it doesn't make you at peace and feel like you're in love with everybody, it's the wrong decision.